I said this once or twice, but it bears repeating. And you can keep your plan if you are satisfied with it. If you like the plan you have, you can keep it. If you like your plan and you like your doctor, you won't have to do a thing. You keep your plan. If you like your health care plan, you'll be able to keep your health care plan. If you've got health insurance, you can keep it. If you like your health care plan, you will keep it your plan. If you've got health insurance, you like your doctor, you like your plan, you can keep your doctor, you can keep your plan. If you have insurance that you like, then you will be able to keep that insurance. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Hour number two, Steve Ballsberg show. You're familiar with this by now. We played you the full version of that where he said it about 14, 15 times in the previous hour. Now, I just want you to hear one thing before we go to our, our next guest. I want you to hear uh, the uh, talk, the chatter on the Morning Joe on MSNBC, where although uh, they, they didn't like to use the lying word, the people around Joe Scarborough, but listen to what Scarborough said because it was an NBC report uh, the other day that uh, said basically Obama knew that uh, this wasn't the case while he was saying it. Here's uh, that uh, Scarborough cut. The bigger part of the story is, damaging part is, Lisa Myers is reporting that the president was saying things that he knew were I not never true. understood, exactly, I never understood why he said, if you like your health care plan, you can keep it because you, he was relying somehow on the insurance no, companies no, to keep no, this Lisa, promise. Lisa Myers no, reported well, right, I understand that he the report. knew that he was not telling the truth. Well, and, and he said uh, it at the State of the Union address. He said it in 2012, based on this NBC News investigation. I, the I, president I, knew he was telling deliberate untruths. Mm. As, uh, uh, and how do they get around that? How do they get around that? Well, a lie's a lie, whether you want to call it. And uh, we welcome in Glenn. Ke uh, Gl Ge <laughs> Take two. We welcome in Glenn Kessler of the Washington Post, of course, the Washington Post fact checker. Glenn, welcome back, sir. Glad to be with you. Well, it's good to talk to you. Um, and, and one thing that struck me there as an aside was um, uh, Chuck Todd, the White House correspondent, saying, I never understood why they made that promise. Well, if you're the White House correspondent, and you're a reporter, and this has been going on for three years more, uh, th then why didn't you ever ask that question over that amount of time if you never understood why they said that? But that's another issue. So you rated the president for Pinocchios. That's, I guess, as bad as you could get, right? Yes, that's the maximum. That means you told a whopper. Well, talk about that. I mean, you, you, you pull out quotes, um, you know, uh, a couple of them uh, from 09, from uh, 010, and then Valerie Jarrett tweeting uh, on 013. Um, you know, it, but, uh, I mean, there's no way around this, right? It, it's a lie. I, well, you know, I, I use the word Pinocchios. I don't, I don't, <laughs> you I don't... too? You won't say lie? Why not? Well, you know, lie, lie suggests um, uh, a, a particular uh, intent? intent. Yeah, intent. okay. And, 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 you know, I can't get in someone's head. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. I'll say lie. You don't have to uh, agree with that. We'll make uh, That's my opinion and not the opinion of my guest. Uh, but uh, talk about, um, you know, talk about what he said and talk about what the facts are as you see them. Well, I mean, he, he said this uh, repeatedly as the health care law was being debated. And, you know, and, it's, and, and one of the things I found is that, you know, there was reporting, for instance, I quote the Associated Press, that said at the time, you can't, it's impossible for the president to make this pledge. And that there was already CBO, um, uh, the Congressional Budget Office, already estimated that 10 million Americans would need to get new insurance. Uh, as the plan was being written, and Republicans had raised this too, but uh, you know, the, the, you know, the president has a very large megaphone, and not only did he say it while it was being debated, but then he said it repeatedly after the law was signed and uh, the bill was signed into law. And as I go through the, the what we're seeing right now is the impact on the individual market, not the people that get their plans through employers, which happens to be most people, but uh, people that buy individual insurance. And uh, there were a number of things that the administration itself put out that said, uh, essentially, because these people, these plans aren't meeting our requirements under Obamacare, a lot of these people are going to lose their insurance. Yeah, and it's funny you said grandfathered because he specifically, uh, back in uh, February of 2010, said said this. Let's listen to what he said. Cut number seven. 
Actually, any insurance that you currently have would be grandfathered in so you could keep. Um, and so you could decide not to get in the exchange the better plan. I, I could keep my ac ACME insurance, uh, just a high deductible catastrophic plan. Uh, I would not be required to get the better one. There you go. Right. But see, there, there are a couple problems there. Uh, first of all, the, the, uh, the regulations that they wrote implementing the plan, and I went, I went through these regulations, they wrote them very tight. So, for instance, there was one provision that said that if the copay increased by more than $5 plus, you know, a percentage of medical inflation, so essentially for last year, if it increased by $5.20, suddenly that plan was no longer grandfathered. Yeah. If they were, the rules were written to kind of get rid of these old, absolutely old plans because you know they wanted, I, I guess, presume they wanted more people to get into the into the new exchanges. System. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and you know, and they, you know, a case can be made that that you know the the benefits that you would be getting are going to be more you know, robust and what have you. Of course, you might have to pay a higher premium because and a higher deductible and get less reimbursement. As so many people have have told me, even Ted Rawl, the liberal cartoonist who I'm sure you're familiar with, said um, his po I think he was going up by over 30, 40 percent in premium. The deductible was was more than was just about double, I think, from two twenty five hundred to uh, fifty to, to five thousand or, or a little less. And uh, he was only going to get reimbursed 50 percent instead of 80 percent. So, I mean, uh, and, and you say better coverage and with all due respect, better according to who? I mean, if I don't want a, a maternity coverage. Now I got to pay for it. If I don't want uh, whatever else baldness coverage, now I got to pay for it. I mean, yeah, yeah I, I actually I corrected myself. I I, I said more robust. Okay, I mean, whatever. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's not. A, yes, you can't make a distinction about what is better. Right, or right, not. right. But, well, the news media it, is doing that every day. Believe me. But anyway, <laughs> uh, well, the, but the, what it is is that it's a mandated, required, right. very broad thing. And yes, I, I saw an interview with a woman who was over forty and said, "I don't want to pay for maternity coverage." Yeah. So Crazy. I, uh, the. You know that, and the other weird thing about the way the law was written uh, was it had this effective date of March twenty third, twenty ten, which you know, was the day the law was signed. But it really, it, it you know, a better way to, you know, the insurance companies actually wanted to have the effective date December thirty first, twenty thirteen. Right. Because that way, if you are in a plan right now, you could say, oh, okay, this is what I'm going to stick in, because I like it this way. But you know, instead they did it. They, so you, if you, if for some reason you changed your plan or you lost your job briefly and then got on a, got on another plan after March twenty third, twenty ten, you have no choice. You know, because that's you're not grandfathered in any any way. Yeah. No, absolutely. And and you, I, I should point out for those of you who haven't read uh, Glenn Kessler's uh, uh, a piece. Um, today, it's not just, you know, blah, 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 four Pinocchios. You got one, two, three. I printed it out four, four pages, uh, chock full of facts, information, quotes, uh, 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 you know, snippets from the bill itself, as you just alluded to, the way it was written uh, with the 5% uh, increase, all that. So you got, you have everything in there, as you always do, but I just want to let people who aren't familiar know that you, you really examine this. And by the way, I'm looking at the, the crawl right now, the closed captioning as the president speaks in Boston, uh, talking about the fact that now it's down to 50 bucks a month. Remember, it used to be 100 bucks now with now 18 uh, young people could get the insurance policy as low as 50 bucks a month it's insane maybe you should fact check that one tomorrow but anyway <laughs> glenn i really appreciate your time sir good to talk to you glad to talk to you thank you glenn kessler ladies and gentlemen washington post fact checker washington post fact checker giving barack obama count them one two three four pinocchios you can't get worse than four Pinocchios. Now he's out there talking about more stuff. It, it, they know no shame. No shame. No shame. Between him and Sibelius, no shame whatsoever. What do you expect? Steve Malsberg Show, Newsmax TV and radio.